Chris Spiker, AV Florist, AV Nice. Today I'm up in Mojave, California at the airport. We call it the Spaceport. Airport manager Stu Whip, my good friend from my Board of Trade days. Yes, sir. And you've been up here 11 years? 11 years. Wow, it seems like only yesterday. So I was Antelope Valley Board of Trade president, and, and I kind of worked the region, worked all the members, and just had a great time up here in Mojave. Personally, I like the restaurant. And the story of how you got the restaurant or the cafe is, is pretty cool. But it's a great place for lunch. It's a, you know, as you're coming through town, uh, the airport's always been here. And, and Stu, you've taken this little sleepy town airport and uh, brought it into the 21st or 22nd century. Yeah, Chris, it's, uh, it's been a wild ride the last 11 years. So I, I do remember our, our first meeting. I think we actually met 11 years ago. Wow. At a board of trade function, and I, I do remember the meeting. And uh, you made it a point to not just make it a one off handshake at a meeting. You made it a point to let's get to know each other and, and uh, see what makes each other tick. And, uh, and you've wow. been back a number of times through the years. And yeah. I remember a conversation once talking about the Cactus Divide. And this morning we were talking about it briefly, and, and I made the comment you know, it's funny, I haven't heard that comment in years and it's funny wow it's irrelevant i don't see it i i could tell you it doesn't exist any longer and i give you enormous credit for that wow because you identified it we did something about it yeah. and now we don't even see it so uh, <laughs> that's it's, great it's pretty good yeah and you mentioned kind of off camera the next project we're working on well which, which i'm excited about so we'll we'll talk about that okay. one later so we fixed something and and you've just gone on with what, what goes on here at the airport, the spaceport? Well, it, it's a long list. Yeah, Chris, uh, I make a lot of tongue-in-cheek jokes about uh, what we really do, and I told many people that if they understood my business plan, they'd probably do a salary review, but I tell people I rent dirt and I sell fuel, and the other thing I do is I give you permission. and. The last is uh, is very serious because you find a place in our risk adverse society where you actually have permission to take risks, to innovate, to try, and have the courage and then the support of your landlord to actually try. Those locations are in very short supply in our society. And that's what we sell. I sell permission. And I'm very deadly serious about that. And I give you permission to succeed or fail. It's your choice. And. America should take a very serious look at the importance of that philosophy, and it's right here in our valley. Wow. It's kind of like, it sounds like it's a cradle of democracy. Well, uh, it should, it is. You mentioned uh, the workforce yeah. getting younger, the next generation of engineers and scientists and the brain trust. How did you attract those people here? Well, I'm not sure we did. But we how did that happen? We created a framework yeah. where uh, we actually made it a goal to attract high net worth people of great vision, and we've been successful at that. Uh, the fact that Paul Allen not only financed Spaceship One development, but is now back with a half a billion dollar investment in Strato Launch, building out 19 acres with one of the biggest hangars ever built, and I'll show it to you in a few minutes. Okay. And, uh, Mojave. Mojave. We're talking Mojave, California. But the, the, I think the internal sale, which is always the most difficult, occurred locally with my own board to convince them that we needed to build a 400-acre site for future development in Mojave, which was dirt. And so we put in the runway extension, the taxiways, the lighting systems, the fiber, because this, this group of people that we intended to attract are from the IT world information yeah. technology. They yeah. are data people. They want the biggest pipe for the biggest pipe full of data imaginable. Uh, today we hooked on to the Digital 395. Yeah. It's up and live in Mojave. Digital 395, I like that. Yeah, and uh, it's it's hooked into one Wilshire from right here, direct shot. Wow. Uh, and that that has been a serious attractant to the next generation uh, scientific minds, the dreamers, the people with means come together with the people uh, with uh, innovative ideas and then you add permission to that and then stand back. Uh, humanity can actually 
create an environment, and we've proven it, where you can have disruptive change. And, you know, disruptive things were the harnessing of fire, the discovery of the wheel, the internet. And I believe if you create an environment, a proper environment, and stand back, give people permission, bring those people together, yeah. very interesting things are potentially uh, going to happen. We don't even know what the next we, thing is called. It's, it's not our job to figure it out. Yeah. It's our job to create the environment. And, I, and, I, and it's funny you're here and we're having this conversation because you're part of it. And we were talking about the, the human issues in our own valley that divided us 10 years ago. It was kind of like inertia, if I remember. I, you're right. Getting some. So um, it's worked. And is this the same talk you gave to the, all the other interviewers? This sounds like a little more. Well, it, 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 we've been a little more introspective this last year as we've tried to figure out where we're going to go this next year. Next. And it's nice to, to, to have people and have you up here pat me on the back and say, gee, you've, you've attracted a new workforce and it's young, it's 30 years old, and, and you created a framework and the new companies are bringing all these. And I say, that's really nice, but how do we keep them? Yeah. Now our focus is quality of life and how we actually retain this new workforce, which is the future of America. And, you know, as other of my board members say, you can see the future from here. How do we take yeah. what's going on here and extend it into society? You have to do that by retaining a workforce. And so my mantra is, if we're going to spend a dollar this year, it must have a tangible link to quality of life for the, the people that are coming to do their, their life's work yeah. in the hobby. And that's why I'm. Uh, we had a conversation about the, the Jethawks. Yeah. So baseball. Baseball. I'm Fun a baseball thing. player. I mean, I went to college because I could play baseball. No yeah. other reason. There was a little war on in Southeast Asia, and I could play baseball. Not very well, as it turns out. But weren't you on the championship well, team? Well, well, yeah. I, I did. Uh, the they team, had a good bench, the, the right? Team, the, I was a bench player. That's right. <laughs> and the team did very well while I was there. But I, I don't know that I ever made a an appearance. You'd have to ask Coach Craven down in uh, Lancaster, Palmdale, that question. But uh, it's a, it's an interesting time, and whatever we do, we must focus on quality of life and retaining this workforce. And I think yeah. we, just like we took on this, uh, the Cactus Divide, we need to, to identify issues in, within our community that yeah. we need, yeah, and break them down and enhance them. And I, I'd really like to see uh, a way for the AV Press to uh, cover the Jetox. I don't know what the division is, but they need to get over it. We're going to fix it. Let's fix it. Let's fix it so we can all enjoy baseball. Because what a team we had this year. Oh, they were the champ. I, I mean, I got invited to throw out the first pitch at the championship game, went to the paper the next day to show everybody, guess what? They don't cover it. Yeah. Well, yeah. I buy a box, a sky box. I give the tickets away to the, the people at the airport uh, to help retain their workforce as a value-added landlord. They want to see their picture in the paper the next day. All well, these uh, things contribute to retention of a workforce. Let's get a couple of adults together. We'll go down there and have a little meeting. Let's do it. Okay, good. So uh, another quality of life, you mentioned the, uh, the, uh, the center, the mm -hmm. art center, yeah. the uh, performance, performing, performing arts, arts, center. arts center. And you're building that right on campus here? Yeah. That's believe unbelievable. Well, yeah, in Mojave. Uh, Doug Shane, uh, president of Scale Composites, walked in one day and said, hey boss, what we need is a performing arts center. And I laughed. I said, yeah, right. I'm trying to build a taxiway and a runway and I don't have any tenants on it. <laughs> and he said, no, I'm serious. He said, you know, these kids were hiring from all over the country and yeah. they, they show up with tennis shoes and blue jeans just yeah. like I dress now. And yeah. I said, yeah, I know those. He said, there's things they want that we don't offer. And he is really the one that inserted the quality of life into me. And it, he's right. So we took a step back, and we have all these old World War II buildings. Yeah. Well, one day I was over in the pool, really? in the pool building, and wow. the pool building has these glue lambs and this fantastic architecture that was could only have been built by the Marine Corps with unbelievable amounts of money in 1942. In a hurry. In a hurry. Yeah. And we have been you. We've been using this building for dry storage. And the, I walked in the side door one day, and there was a a sparrow in the far distant corner of the building about maybe a hundred yards away, yeah. and it sounded like it was right there. Wow. And I remember from music appreciation class in right. college right. talking about an acoustically active building. It's yeah. funny, 
it's still there. And Whatever you learned, it, it is retained. And you've got one. Uh, and right? I have one. I yeah. have an acoustically active building. And I said to Doug, you're serious. He said, I am. I said, come on, let's go for a drive. I said, I know a place we got to take a look. Well, the building had a bunch of windmill components and generators stored in it. Right. But there was still a sparrow. And we stood in the corner. I said, what do you hear? He said, that's fantastic. <laughs> he said, this is our building. Wow. So uh, about a year and a half later, we're, we're building it out. We hope to have our first event in there in February. And I'll tell you, Chris, you know one of our goals is to have the AV Board of Trade uh, installation? No, conference. You're oh, yeah. In yeah. that building. Yeah, have a conference. You can put 1,400 people in that building. Serve them lunch. Wow. And it, it, it could, you know, I think if we actually achieve what we're setting yeah. out to do, Sounds like the, a uh, venue. the 2015 uh, Outlook Conference is, is just, we've scooped them. Yeah. And when you mention that theater, I think of like the groups in, Lan the theater groups in Lancaster and Palmdale who have trouble finding a place to put their show on. They get in the car, come up here, put a show on for a couple hundred happy people. How cool is that? Yeah. I, 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 or 1,400 happy people. Well. I was, the period of my life, I flew jets for the Navy out of Lemoore, the Naval Air Station. Yeah. Now, you know, Lemoore's out in the middle of Lake Mojave, nowhere. And we didn't have a place to have events. We had a station theater, but who wants to go to the station theater? But some fella over towards Hanford or Lemoore or somewhere had a, had a barn, and it was Jack Stone's. It became known as Jack Stone's Barn. You know, for years, the only events you held were at Jack Stone's barn, and it had a cool factor. Yeah. It was a barn, but it was a venue, and if, if, if you trick it out right, and it has its own magnetism, and I think this little performing arts center, if we do it properly, will be a destination, and anybody would, gee, we're going to Mojave tonight. Why not? Yeah. It could yeah. be neat. Yeah. So... I came up here to see the restaurant again, but now we're going to go look at the Performing Arts Center. Mojave, yeah, we'll go take a look. Mojave Performing they're, Arts Center. They're uh, doing some painting and they're putting in the, uh, we've, well, you'll see what we've done. We've done an amazing amount of work and now we're down to the finish work. Well, you know, I appreciate our friendship, but you know, you represent an amazing facility here and there's so much that goes on. So that's the story I was looking for was yeah. all the things that go on at the Mojave Airport. And well, you know, everybody, to go we on. forget that in this last decade, more rocket motors have been tested in Mojave than the rest of the world combined. Wow. Yeah. How did that happen, Chris? Hmm. Not by accident. No, I don't know. I mean, it's a, it, it just, uh, it is, a, it's a, it's a very humbling to think, how did that happen? And, and the mines collected here and the, uh, you get all these people out of the IT business that brought their, uh, their skills and their discretionary income to Mojave and to other places to create a new industry. And I think it's the hope of a manned, uh, manned space in the next uh, century. I think the foundation of that industry is alive and well in Mojave. And, uh, you know, look at the successes that uh, SpaceX has had. Now they're designing the system that will fly under Paul Allen's strata launch yeah. uh, and that's occurring right here in Mojave uh, that's pretty neat well that's a lot of hope it's a it's a hope for the whole world a hope yeah. for so many programs you know it is a borderless industry and uh, we've said it many times if we are successful in Mojave the industry will have many systems to fly hopefully worldwide and uh, there's some legislative issues that we're working in Washington uh, with our representatives. I was on the phone earlier this morning. I didn't want to wait for the paint to dry and the ink to dry on the election. I want to get started during the lame duck and start working on legislation that can affect this industry going forward and uh, export reform, uh, commercial space acts. Uh, there's a number of issues that affect this industry. and. Frankly, right now, the industry that we've created only has access to about 30% of the total worldwide industry. If we can export this industry worldwide, it opens up a 70% greater market uh, or a, an enormous growth, yeah. two and a half times growth of an industry. So now you're in the export business. Now we're in the export business, <laughs> yeah. It's fun. It is fun. 
Want to well, go take a look? Let's go take a look. Okay. I, I just want to say, Stu Witt, you're AV nice. Uh, Hopefully one day the Mojave you. Performing Arts Center, and it, it was a pool building, and we decided to uh, take some discretionary money and resurrect this old building into something that it could be. It once was housed the swimming pool for the training of Navy and Marine pilots in World War II. If their airplanes were downed in the South Pacific, how they could uh, maneuver themselves out of the shroud lines of a parachute and, and uh, how to train themselves to deploy their rafts, etc., and then be picked up. Well, this was the building. And so we have uh, spent some money and a lot of our labor. And you can see these blue lamb beams that were actually built right in this building. Really? Yes, right here. Wow. Before the, and so there. 70 years ago. 70 years ago. And we said, this is uh, one of those marvelous structures that you want to preserve. Yep. And uh, turn this into a performing arts center for the tenants. Uh, again, a quality of life uh, investment in our future. So, uh, but you you could allow your neighbors in the Antelope Valley absolutely to come up here, and uh, the Board of Trade is invited As a, for the Outlook Conference. Uh, you probably get a preferred rate on that, uh, and we'll get a good rate on it. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's go and take a look on the okay. other side. Total a place fit. where you can come for lunch and work out. Yeah. So on the other side, we are in discussions with two fitness companies to wow. move a fitness company to Mojave. Again, quality of life. Yeah, and they'll have they'll have uh, set business because they'll sign contracts with the companies up here, and they'll have all the people, all the they've got customers. ready-made customers. Wow, it's like a no-brainer, huh? Yeah. So you you can start seeing what we're seeing here. See the you know the, the painting of the steel that anchors yep. that anchor. You know that was just rusted out in steel. You know, you start hiring labor from town. And all the people that have touched this are residents of the. Antelope Valley and the, and the Mojave. And it's a possibility that some of the people working on it, they, their grandfather could have been here, oh. here putting it together. The inspector yeah. said, I remember pouring the concrete for this floor. <laughs> there was another guy who said, my granddad helped build these blue lamps. Wow. In the 40s. Yeah. It, it's it's yeah. Uh, sentimental to the people. People want to work on it. You know, and I, can we... A big facility like this, uh, you do a lot of filming out here. There's somebody uh, every day filming every day. a commercial or a movie. I remember you made a little offer to the Board of Trade, yeah. a finder's fee. Uh, but what a great place if they have to move indoors to do some shooting. The, 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 Chris, it's, it's just like, why should we be the ones to figure out how it's going to be used? Just yeah. get it out there. Okay. You're going to build it. You're going to build it. And, uh, Where they boiled the water. 1942. Put some blue lamps, expand this. We have it all structurally and uh, sound now. We've got all the water delivery system going in. We've got tons of electrical power in this building. But, it, you know, I grew up on a ranch where my grandfather was a developer, and we, if, we had, if we needed it, we had to build it. And it's it's those are a real gift to have coming to a job like this because you have to be able to see something rough and imagine what it can be. Yeah. It's not just tear everything down. Some things are worth saving and this one certainly was worth saving. Well, it's a beautiful building and it has some So this will be our total fitness area. That'd be nice. I'm at the Mojave Airport Spaceport in what's going to be the new Performing Arts Center in Mojave, California. Can you believe it? That's pretty darn cool. Stu Witt, thank you. Thanks, Chris. Yep. Thanks for coming up again. My pleasure. Yeah, it's, My always, pleasure. it's always fun. It's like home. Yeah, it's always fun.